What's going on, guys? All right, we got Chuck's 2024 Dark Horse up in the dyno again, and you've seen this car already. Um, we had this car up in the dyno, did a baseline on it, oh, last week. So today we got it back up in the dyno because we've been seeing some, some buzz on the internet about taking the carbon filters, so they're like a carbon trap, out of the intake tube. So you can, again, these S650s have twin intakes, and the, the intake boxes, the air boxes have, that's like a secondary kind of air filter in them. So we're, we were kind of looking at them. We think there's a gain. And so we want to verify it in the dyno. So we're, we're going to spin this thing up and we're going to baseline, we're going to rebaseline it. So we're going to spin it again with everything stock, with the carbon filters installed intact. And we're going to basically, while the cars, we're going to spin it up, shut it off. We're going to get to work, remove those things. Hopefully it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes. And we're going to spin it up again and get a baseline on it and compare the two. And hopefully we see a gain. I think we're going to see a gain. I think we're going to see, just by looking at them, I think we're going to see between 10 and 15 horsepower. So we, this car did make 444 to the rear tires horsepower. And it'd be really cool to see like a 460, but I don't know if we'll quite get there. But um, we'll see. So we're going to get to work. So we're going to get, again, we're going to do a baseline kind of establish, reestablish a baseline number for today, because just because we don't want to try to compare to a dyno on a different day, different weather. Uh, today is no sun, a little cooler out. So we're going to spin it up in this weather and get to work, remove them, put the boxes back together, do another pull and see what kind of gain we get. Right about where we were before. Like I said before, we made 444, 443, and 388 torque. That's pretty much right on from where we were. So we're gonna get to work. We're gonna get to work, pull those pull those carbon traps out and text me your address so I can get it to my plumber. <laughs> and then we'll uh We'll uh, we'll do another. We'll spin this thing up again and see if we see, we see any gain. Hopefully we see. Uh, I mean, it would be really cool to hit 460. I mean, that would be like. I mean, there's like bolt-on like Gen 2 Kaidus that make 460. So to have a car like this making, you know, previous car with full bolt-ons with like headers and stuff. But we'll see. We'll pull them out and uh, see what we get. That looks restrictive. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, and there's another little triangle thing in there too. Double. Cut it out. Double. Wide open. This is like a couple ounces lighter. I mean, that's a pretty big diameter inside, you know. So yeah, snap this back in. So that's like a straightener. So like the air coming in through the filter, it helps straighten the air coming across the mass airflow sensor. So that you want that you need to put back in for sure, because that like the calibration will depend on it. All right, guys. So we got those removed. So you saw me cutting those little kind of triangle-looking plastic things out of there, pulling those carbon traps out, and uh, we just had like a wide open tube. So hopefully we're going to see a little bit of a gain. I'm thinking we see maybe 10 horsepower to the tires, um, maybe more. I don't know. I don't see picking up a whole lot more than that, but. Um, yeah, let's get this spun up. We're pretty much back up to temperature. I've had it running for, for a minute or so. And uh, we're right back about 183. So I'm gonna get this thing up into fifth gear and uh, we'll see what it makes. Looks like we picked up a little bit in the mid-range. Peak, nothing. One, which had already made 444. So, so yeah, we can see like we picked up a little bit in the mid-range here. Yeah, it looks like we picked up like 
I mean, again, this isn't a whole lot. It's less than I thought. Four, five, but then at the peak, you can see we, we picked up one. I mean, <laughs> two, <laughs> so very little. But I mean, it looks like it did something in here, but um, what I'm thinking we do, just for fun, just for the for internet's sake, is we take, which we've done on the GT500s before earlier on, is take the lids off the air boxes and see what that does. So obviously the carbon traps didn't really do much. <laughs> so that might not be a worthwhile gain for guys to pull their tubes off and cut those out for maybe five horsepower in the mid range there, but Chuck's taking these lids off and yeah, should we try this again? <laughs> So now we're on to something. So, just like a Shelby, it's like a GT500, like a 2020 and up, when you take those lids off, we would see a gain. So now you can see that's pretty significant, especially up at the top end, like you'd think if you're removing a restriction out of the intake, the biggest gains you're going to see are going to be at the top of the RPM range. So now I know that doesn't apply to driving it down the road with the hood shut, but that does give us some insight that those air boxes are restrictive. So if in the future the aftermarket companies would were to come up with an open element air box that that would sorry about the noise guys that would uh, that would kind of open up that filter and give it a little bit more bigger of a chamber to draw air out of, obviously and still retain the the ram air intakes. But yeah, that's 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 showing us that we're onto something with uh, with a cold air tube. We'd uh, there's so I think there's definitely gonna be gains with like a twin cold air aftermarket setup, especially if we get rid of those corrugated pipes, the, the intake tubes. So yeah, that's pretty cool to see. I mean, 450. That's hitting a 450 number. That's pretty cool. So it's kind of exciting. So Chuck could probably go take it for another couple uh, draggy runs and see if he notices anything different on the street. Maybe lids on and lids off. Try that too with the draggy. Concluding this video, wrapping this up here. So obviously red line was the baseline. Blue was the carbon traps removed and green was with the lids off. So obviously again, with the lids off, that's kind of a, a novelty thing for the dyno, but I think it does kind of show that there is restriction in those factory air boxes. And again, I think there's going to be gains to be had by aftermarket cold air pipes. So I kind of thought that there would be a little bit of a gain taking these out. This is kind of how they sit in there all wound up. And I mean, it is definitely is a restriction, but obviously we proved that it's really not. So the other thing to keep in mind on these S650, S650 cars is when we're dynoing these things and in between maybe every, every two poles we do, we, we do runs with, um, we have to clear all the ABS codes. Um, the, uh, with, the AB, with, with the chassis codes and ABS codes set, it's not putting the proper air fuel ratio into, into the motor. So it's too lean and then it goes way too rich at the end. So we're clearing those codes out so it's the same every single time. Um, and that's how we're doing these runs. And uh, so, you know, maybe there might be some discrepancies elsewhere with, with guys maybe not doing that. So, um, so again, we're trying to keep everything the same, same temperatures making sure there's no code set in the ECUs between, between runs. Um, so uh, I think uh, in the future in this car, obviously we're gonna be doing some other stuff to it. Chuck's gonna take it to the racetrack. And um, we do have, and I'll say this now, we do have a, we have a relationship with Whipple and we do have a Whipple on order for it. We should, it should be a couple months before we see that, but definitely look for that down the road. Um, there'll be tons of content once we boost this thing. Um, and we'll obviously be doing other stuff to it. So. Uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, interrupt. comment. Uh -oh. Interruption. Interruption from Chuck. <laughs> I just wanted to make a point. Everybody's talking about the different temperatures and stuff, like how the dyno's reading different horsepowers, like because it's cooler out. Oh, yeah. It's 20 degrees cooler than it was. So let's come over here. <laughs> so all dyno jets yeah. have this atmospheric sensor. So this is reading <laughs> temperature, air pressure of the atmosphere, and humidity. So when we're doing our, the correction factor, 
on that dyno screen, when you're looking at these dyno graphs, that is being, the, the air that we're dynoing the cars in is being corrected to an SAE number. So that's what you're seeing here. So. And the dyno numbers are exactly what we made when it was 80 something yes. degrees out. So again, we'll go back, if you go back to that previous video when we first had this car in the dyno and we were just doing baselines on it, it I think the final pull it made 444. Oh, yeah. So you can see it's repeatable, even though today is, it's way drier, it's way cooler. Uh, we had a little bit of a cold front move in last night. So the, before we had a dyno, it was hot, humid, muggy summer weather. And, you know, September in Wisconsin, we're starting to see some cooler days. So, but again, it's repeatable. So um, that's also something to keep in mind when, when you're on the internet, scarring the internet for dyno videos is you really got to look at the consistency and how they're being done. So again, we're doing SAE. Some of the other guys are doing standard. Standard's going to read higher. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is cool. We're super excited to be messing with this thing. And, uh, you know, you guys really got to check out our other videos and look to our channel for and our Instagram for more content and, uh, you know, hit the bell, all that other stuff. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you guys later.